Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second part of iMovie in the Classroom with Catherine Malski. Um, my name is Victoria Olson, and I'm going to get us started on our podcast today for the EdTech Mentorship Network. Uh, so if you're following the podcast today, you can get at us on Twitter with the hashtag ETMN, or you can find us on the Google Plus community, uh, EdTech Mentorship Network. You can also check out our draft form website at ETMN. MN.org. Uh, if you are following along the Hangout live tonight, you can also interact with us using the Google Hangout on Air question and answer feature. So if you just uh, are on the event page, you can type your uh, question right into the event page there, and we'll, it'll pop up, and we'll be able to address it at some point throughout the podcast. Um, so with no further ado, I'm going to get our panel introduced. So uh, Jeremy, can you introduce yourself, please? Hello, I'm Jeremy Insko, grade 6, 7 teacher at uh, Koltai Elementary in the Navalde Smith Public School District. Um, bit of a tech guy too, obviously, um, doing this kind of stuff and enjoying it, loving every minute and looking forward to uh, sharing and learning tonight. Awesome, welcome as always and uh, Kat, Kat, could you please introduce yourself? Absolutely, my name is Catherine Malski and I work over at Alex Hope Elementary in Langley School District. Um, I am currently grade 6 late French immersion teacher and have a large tech enthusiast. I do a lot of tech mentoring and tech coaching in my district as well as help out with uh, other neighboring districts and up at the University at Simon Fraser. So lots of different things going on but uh, I'm definitely excited to be back this evening to talk to you guys a little bit more about different aspects of iMovie, in particular iMovie 2013. Excellent. Oh, yeah, we're super excited, and Monday's session was awesome, so if uh, mm -hmm. you are watching or you're watching this later and you haven't seen part one, go watch part one. Uh, Kat does a really awesome job of going over trailers, and it's a great way to hook kids into the power of video creation uh, with this specific software, but you could do it with many different softwares, lots of practical tips for movie making, so check it out. Yeah. Right on. Well, I think what I'll do is I'll start right away with a screen share so that I can get right back into the iMovie interface that I had up the other day. So just bear with me again. My computer's probably running a little bit slower than it would be if we weren't doing a Google Hangout. So I'm just yeah. going to set up my desktop share here, and then we'll get cracking. That's our mini disclaimer every time we're on a podcast. Mm -hmm. Just know that we might be going slower than usual because reasons, bandwidth, SRAMs, yeah, things like absolutely. that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to pull up the iMovie interface again, and what you're seeing here is I basically haven't started anything. Um, as a preempt, what I've done tonight is I simply took a quite, uh, couple of photos and videos off of my phone, actually, created a small little album, and imported those into I, or iPhoto a little bit earlier on today. Um, so those should have been imported mm -hmm. under my events here. So I'm going to scroll down. I think where did I put her? She's at the bottom here. Yeah. The Nora Year End Show is my uh, the event that I'm going to be working out of today, so I'm going to double click that so that I have all the media ready to go and ready to work with. Um, I know, um, obviously for uh, <laughs> for uh, good digital citizenship practices, and also the fact that I can't share any images of uh, my fellow students tonight, um, it's best that I do it with the permission of my own dog. So. Um, tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about what it looks like to create a movie from scratch. So um, last time I spoke on uh, the podcast, I talked to you kind of about getting started on iMovie with trailers, which again is still um, a really good way to kind of ease into it, and it's also the way that I would probably recommend any new users to iMovie to start with. Um, so tonight what I'll do is go back up to my Create menu, and instead of choosing Trailer, I'm going to start a new project which is a movie. So this is this is the chance that you have to basically create everything from scratch, bit of a jigsaw. So you have elements of GarageBand that can be incorporated into this. You have elements of iPhoto. Um, you also have elements of uh, iTunes because um, it will ask you whether or not you want to start using your own music in this. So um, what pops up right away is themes. So if you're looking to do like simple slideshows or things that are going on, it's kind of neat to choose a theme because sometimes, like you saw on Monday, you saw the shot screens. So those were th those were the little screens that came up saying medium, large, single party, those kinds of things that kind of pre prompted you to, to drag and drop certain types of photos or media. Um, themes will do similar things. So. For example, if you're going to create a uh, newscast, 
um, project for your students, I definitely recommend the CNN I report. So I'm just moving my cursor over this. I'll show a preview of it just so you get an idea of what it would look like to drag and drop media into it. But it is a pretty cool aspect, and it's found again under creating a new movie rather than a trailer. <laughs> So obviously it's middle of May and something that I see right away in even just the stock footage that iMovie provides is this would be a really cool way to wrap up your sports day um, is create a CNN iReport on uh, or you can even change the CNN to CTV which would be awesome because go Habs go. Um, <clears throat> but what would be neat is to wrap up your sports day in creating one of these. But today I'm going to choose something with no theme. However, I will scroll down so you get an idea of some of the other elements or other themes that you could choose from. Um, there's two other newscasts here. Those are from the previous iMovie. So this is from iMovie 2011. Both of these on either side here in the blue and the red. Um, and then photo album is a great one, especially if you're doing a slideshow. Retirement. Um, these are really great ways to kind of get into this. Again, using a lot of drag and drop methods from your your iBoo uh, theme windows. But today I'm going to go with nada, no theme. So I'm going to create this right away. And I'm going to, of course, leave it in finalized movies because that's usually the easiest place for, for me to find it. And I'm going to call this Nora Year End. Because if you are a teacher that's looking at potentially putting together a year end movie for perhaps all the media, film, photos that you've taken of all your students throughout the year. This is a great way to kind of com combine everything and add that to some media or some songs that the kids really like, some popular songs, and that really gets them jazzed for, for the uh, end of the year. So um, let's see what pops up. Awesome. Here's my interface now. So I've got, this is where I'm going to be working. This is where I'm going to drag and drop elements, which is right underneath here. And you can see um, <clears throat> that I've got a bit of the cursor moving around. But also, I have a little pocket down here where it tells me this is where my music can go. Um, also, down at the very bottom here, you can see finalized movies. So these are elements or media that I've already used in the past. So I'm going to go back up, and it looks like I might need to revisit um, my iPhoto library to pull out my media, which is right here. So here's Nora's year-end show. So again, it's really much an element of dragging and dropping. So if I want to start with, let's say, a title, so we don't necessarily want to start our slideshow right away with just a sudden image. I would go down to my content library where I'm moving my cursor around and around here. Content library is where you're going to find the main elements that help move the movie along. They can help you put names on media. So for example, we can see the picture of Nora on the right hand side. So I'm going to drag and drop her photo up here. I'm sorry, just bear with me, it's a little bit slow. And you'll see that the media actually looks a little bit different when it pops up. And what it's telling me in the corner here is that the media is worth four seconds. So that means that the viewer will see this photo for four seconds. Now iMovie seems to really, really love this Ken Burns effect, which is either the zoom in or zoom out effect of a still photograph. If you want to change that, you can simply press on the media. Sorry. Yeah. A little bit different here. Up in my adjust menu here on the right hand side. I'm going to click on adjust. And I can choose to change this, this uh, picture if I want. So I can change its size. I can change color. So if I choose the little cropping here, I, maybe I don't want the Ken Burns effect, but it does it by default. So if you're interested in not having Ken Burns done to all of your stills, those are the photographs that you add to your movie, I'm just going to simply put fit. So that means that fits to the screen, fits to the, um, to the ratio that you've chosen for the movie when it gets um, finalized and then exported to either your USB stick or to your desktop. Can I jump in there? Absolutely. That, uh, the Ken Burns effect, like, I, I tend to like it, but I find yeah, that yeah. the default yeah, settings like on it um, don't work. Like you're, you're looking at you know, somebody's knees, um, but it looks yeah. like it's yeah. It starts and ends and fades too, so you actually have some control over that. That's, that's yeah, nice to which see is it. awesome because sometimes media uploads differently. Sometimes the kids, for example, in the classroom, if you're if they're uploading a bunch of media and you want to create the slideshow, or you yourself, maybe you've taken a lot of photos 
Um, like for example, if you just take a look in my events here, I have a mix of portrait and landscape in here, but for the most part we do tend to, to film or should film and do photograph in landscape. Um, but sometimes, especially when we're taking pictures of individual children that we want to put into slideshow, we might actually be taking stills in portrait mode. Um, so in that case, that does give us the opportunity to kind of fit that photo to the screen. And again, revisiting the element of Ken Burns. I like it for the fact that it gives the, the appearance of the movie actually moving, um, rather than just looking at one blank, you know, <laughs> blankly staring photo for, you know, the four seconds. And for the most part, my rule of thumb is no, no shorter than three seconds and usually no longer than five for a still photo on iMovie. Otherwise, it becomes a really long time for us to watch that still. That's good um, about some guidelines that way. Yeah. And also, I mean, for any of us, because sometimes there's been some cringeworthy photos that I have seen of, <laughs> of myself that get, you know, put up on big screen. And, you know, five seconds seems like a lifetime, but we're also... Whoa based on the media that we see in commercials and even in videos, music videos in particular, um, we're all basically attuned to seeing an image for no more than three seconds before it changes. So that's, that's another reason why it becomes a little bit more user friendly when we use those guidelines. But yeah, if we're talking about someone's knees, for example, in the Ken Burns, if I went back to the effect, you can kind of see Nora's face is highlighted right now, but I'm going to click on that box that's sort of light and I'm going to move it around. You might notice also that it says start in the left hand corner. That's where you're going to first see the image. So I'm going to adjust that and then I'm going to go to the end box which is also around it but le le less shaded, sorry. So I'm going to click on that and work with that one and move it down a little bit because that's where I want people to stop seeing the image. Once I, I'm happy with it, I can preview it based on this little menu popping up which is play, go back, move forward, expand this so I could see this in larger light, or this play button over here actually would play the full video of all the stills that you've put together so far. So I can preview this just to kind of see what the Ken Burns would look like. doesn't seem to be happy with me right now, so I'm not too worried, but I will check this off to make sure that things are good. Now maybe I can play it. All right, no, not a big deal. Either way, I save my settings so that when I go back into my movie, Spacebar again is our go-to play, so I just hit spacebar and it will play my movie for me. So it finishes right at the bottom of her paw, like I had anticipated. Um, so again, dragging and dropping all your media, so you've got all your photos of your kids. I definitely recommend if you're doing a year-end video, um, if you haven't already, <laughs> a little small weekend project might be going into iMovie and, or sorry, into iPhoto and kind of pre-setting aside like maybe seasonal activities that you've done in your classroom into separate um, folders. That way it becomes a lot easier for you to retrieve these photos in iMovie and then you're not going to lose out on any photos. So like Halloween can go in Halloween and Easter activities or springtime stuff, sports day, um, Christmas celebrations, you name it, Valentine's Day, Father's Day, Mother's Day, everything that's coming up um, or field trips. You know, you might want to kind of conglomerate everything together. So making those folders will go a long way. And then, you know, it's totally up to you how you want to personalize. So I'm going to continue to personalize. I'm going to take Nora. We'll, we'll call this Easter. Um, this is our next one. So I'll put that right next door. And now this one's portrait. So I definitely see how it scrolls up ways. That's good. I don't want it to scroll the other way. So I'm going to keep scrolling along just using my mouse here. Now, what I'm finding is that right now, it's hard for me to kind of see where the rest of the image is going. To adjust this, I move my cursor up here to where you see this film strip and this little indicator. This will stretch out the amount of your timeline. Your timeline is what we look at for all the images that go in. So then that way I can kind of anticipate what to put in here later. So you can adjust this to what you like. So you can have a really long timeline if you prefer to see things or you're doing some editing work. I prefer a shorter timeline so that I can have a better idea of images that are coming up or where I want to kind of drag and drop or move things. Um, but I would really like to put a title to this one. So while it's selected, and that's a really good key thing with iMovie, is that any film or any sort of box that you've got selected, that's what you're working with. So if you accidentally hit delete, that's what you've deleted. 
Um, anytime that you're editing, ensure that whatever you need to edit is what's highlighted. I'll go down into my content library and I'm going to add a title. So when I select title, I get lots of different themes. Um, it's pretty cool because when you run your cursor over these, they will normally show you what this looks like. So for example, let's see what PRISM looks like. Just wait a second while the spinning wheel of death slows itself down. <laughs> I know, right? Typical. But you know what? This is okay. I'm glad that people get to see this because despite, you know, obviously Hangout happening at the same time, this will happen with your hardware at school, so don't be afraid of it. Um, again, remember autosave for iMovies, so if this puppy decides to quit on me right now, I'm not going to lose anything. But it is taking its sweet time, which is not so fun. So, anyway, <laughs> there we go. So, there's gravity lower thirds. So, what I do is I literally move this across here so I get an idea of what the titling would look like. Something that drops down, or, ooh, title text that just sits and then disappears. And this is where the kids and yourself will probably spend a lot of time because, you know, you want to check every element out, you want to test it out, see what you like. Um, so I'm going to probably put one. Uh, that looks pretty decent. You also have to consider the media that you're putting the title on. So it looks like Nora's background is pretty light. So I'm probably going to want to choose, A, a font that's fairly large. And I'm also probably going to want to choose a darker color, something that could be seen. Um, word to the wise, choosing fonts um, using the colors of yellow and green and even sometimes red are extremely hard to read with video. So it's really important that if you are encouraging titling on your video or let's say you know, you're putting all these kids' photos together and you're putting their names at the bottom of each photo, um, probably choose something that's a little bit easier to read depending on the background. So if you were putting a name on a child's photo and the child has a blue t-shirt, maybe choose white lettering, something that will stick out so that you can see it. But again, um, the types of greens and yellows that are, are offered on the color palette, which is again located up here under the adjust menu, um, it, it can get way too bright. So super important um, in choosing your, your colors and fonts. So I think I'm going to choose, hmm, I know, see this is what takes the time. Maybe. Yeah, let's go with upper. It's not exciting, but I like it. So I'm going to drag upper, my choice, right on top of the media that I want the title to go on. If you notice, though, if I move it over a bit, sometimes only half of Nora's image is highlighted. What that means is that the title itself, so I'll let go, and it's represented by this purple box. This will show the title only after 2.6 seconds into the title, rather than at the very beginning. So if you want to move it, you just simply drag it to the front. Now it's still sitting at 2.6 seconds, which means it'll stop showing it, even though Nora's photo is 4 seconds. So what I like to do is simply with the trim or extending, it'll show up once you pull your cursor over top of that. I'll just simply click on it and drag it out until it hits the four seconds. Oh, that's way too far. There we go. Looking pretty good. Now to work with it, I highlight it and move over to my window. I'll click on this. See what I got. Title. Yeah. And then I can change my name, which is Nora. Now the white is still pretty light, so I think I might go back in there and change my color which is located in the top right hand here. You also have the choice of bold, italicized. Where do you want it to sit in terms of its orientation? Do you want it to the far right? Do you want it directly in the middle? I think I'm going to choose, let's see, maybe a dark blue. No, you guys let me know what you think. That's not. Okay. So that's what titling will do. Oh, yeah, the green. Hmm, top. So you play around with it, right? Again, I can preview this by simply going and taking the playhead, which is that long orange that you see at the front here that always moves along with my cursor, that's called the playhead, um, and just press my spacebar again to preview what things look like. So there's Nora, and then we're going to cut to some bunny ears. Now, if you don't like the sudden cutting from image to image, 
Another nice aspect of the content library is your transitions. So again, bottom left hand corner, these are all your little editing tools. So I'm going to click on transitions and a whole new other menu is going to pop up underneath here at the bottom. You see all different types of effects and again running that playhead across it will give you an idea of what the transition does. Um, my personal favorite and my go-to transition is obviously cross dissolve because it has a nice easy flow and it's really easy on the eyes. There's some really cool effects in here though. You can turn images into cubes and the kids really like seeing this and it's really kind of fun to just drag and drop as many transitions as you want between image to image. There's a lot um, of transitions in here. Yeah, there is. For 2013, there's a lot more. They've added at least six or seven new ones, which is really nice. Um, and again, transitions just add that nice flow to your movie, but also kind of cuts down on that choppy idea of like, okay, image one, image two, you know, almost like an old slideshow. So I'll show you what the, what, uh, the effect looks like again um, from the beginning. But what I will tell you is that when this is highlighted, it also has its own timing. So right now it sits at 1.0 seconds, so that means that the transition is one second between the two images. You can change that by simply clicking on it and changing your transition time. But what I warn you is, is if your transition time becomes longer than the actual image itself, so let's say I pull back Nora's image and move it back into like 3.3 seconds, something new for 2013 is that it actually stops you for it. So what I mean by that is I had it at my four seconds and when I was bringing it back it actually shows me a red line which says you can only have up to this amount of time for this image otherwise your transition will not work. In older versions of iMovie what that will look like is you'll try a transition and as it plays or when you try to add it a big menu thing pop up saying unfortunately your transition is shorter or too long for this clip add more media. So it's kind of nice, it's a little bit more intuitive and just kind of tells you like, whoop, that's as far as you can go without it affecting it. So I'll play from the beginning, putting the playhead at the beginning again and just hit my space bar, little transition into my dude. See how quick that was though? So I'm going to push that back because I know obviously now with a transition I might need longer image and I'll play again. So now we're seeing this transitioning in, ah, much better. So it really just becomes a little bit of a trial and error with transitions, but it's definitely a fun aspect to iMovie that's super fun to play with. A lot of finicky um, work for sure, right? Pardon? A lot of finicky work. It is finicky. Um, I actually like the word finite, um, <laughs> only because um, for some people, including myself, I actually take a lot of pride in once I kind of know um, the software, I really enjoy kind of playing around with timing transitions and really making that product that much better um, and you'll know that from like if you're taking this into a classroom and your kids are playing with it and starting a new movie they're gonna learn really quickly what's working what's not working their biggest troubleshoot is going to be well how do we make this shorter or how do we make this clip longer because they can kind of already sense when something doesn't flow um, and we take for granted even in motion pictures how nicely like the screen credits come up how nicely some images transition into others and um, something I didn't mention on our podcast on Monday but I mean this is the same software including Final Cut Pro um, that is used for most major motion picture editing so you know it's something to actually it's, it's worth mentioning to the kids because they do they will again see themselves as filmographers and get really excited on the fact that like this is no different from some guy in California sitting there at Skywalker Ranch like editing away because that's really that's really what it is um, and it's interesting to talk to film editors um, I have a few friends in California that prefer iMovie over Final Cut Pro for, for, the, for the very thing that you were talking about Jeremy the whole kind of finicky finite just really you know how does this work where does this work so it, yeah, it's kind of neat I'm a real perfectionist, so when I'm when I'm doing this, I spend a lot of time adjusting. It is just that really point two really seconds time. can make a big difference. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. But when we're talking about, you know, what like not to scare some some of our newbies, but I definitely say, you know, for someone who's starting out and just wants to do a year-end video, there's absolutely nothing wrong with simply dragging and dropping all your media in, adding some music, and calling it a day. Like that way, you're just at least getting started with it. And you can kind of see what a basic slideshow idea would, would be 
in iMovie. So yeah, it certainly works. I, I should throw that out there that I'm a bit of a perfectionist too, so I want it exactly yeah. the way I want it. Yeah, it's definitely worth getting your kids involved too. So all you teachers out there who are interested in doing a year-end video and thinking about using iMovie, please ask your students. Don't be afraid to feel vulnerable in front of them and ask them for the assistance. The kids really enjoy these movies at the end of the year, and they really, really enjoy seeing themselves up on screen. It makes them not only feel valued and welcomed, but it's really neat, actually, if you can involve them to help you out, because then they feel that they're a part of also the creative process of making that video for the class. So that's definitely something I would, I would uh, throw out there. Something I will also add, so I need to go back into my library, um, is I'll add some other media. So we've looked at two stills, but what I'm going to do is add video now. And so I know it's video based on the little video camera you're seeing here by my cursor. And you're also noticing the same effect that happened last time when I clicked on film, is I do have the option of dragging the playhead to tame what sort of section of the film I want. So I don't, I'm not going to take all of this film. I'm only going to take a certain section of it. Once the hand is available, I know it's ready to drag and drop up into my timeline. How do you preview what you've selected? There it used to be a little yellow um, play button. That doesn't need to be yes. Out. So if I went back, I could simply put the playhead within that yellow block and press my space bar and preview it again. And roll from there. Okay. Yeah. So I have I have a general idea of what that is. Um, again, that's more, I mean, that's definitely, like, high detail, but that might be in a case where you've got, you know, um, just a certain piece that you really, really needed to add, and you don't need, like, you just took more film. Remember, I was all about, yeah, 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 take lots of film, and so that way you can kind of cut down, because it's, it, I don't know, it's, it's like, because I'm getting married, I'm going to give you a wedding analogy. It's like buying a wedding dress, get it a few sizes too big, because I'll tell you, girls, it's a lot easier to cut something down than it is to take something out. So same thing with your film. It's really, it's really twofold. So, I'll take your for it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's really true, Jeremy, though. Like, you can cut your dress down. It's cool, man. Yeah, well, just, you know, you know, take it in rather than trying to let out let out film, yeah, because once you don't have enough film, you don't have enough film. So I'm going to take my film up here, and you'll notice that there's a small bar here. That's the actual audio of the clip. Now, if I was going to add music, which I will show you to do here, I'm just looking at time, so I do have time to show you um, how to add some music. Um, I would suggest adjusting the volume to zero on any media clips if you know you're going to be using music unless you need the audio from that clip. That's a totally different story. But in this case, again, under the context of a year-end video, you would probably rather just have your volume. So you'll see the two arrows show up when I run my cursor around that line. I'm going to click on it and drag it downwards. The percentage represents the amount of volume being present in the clip. So by default, it's at 100%. And sometimes this is a good way of actually making clips louder um, but in this case, I want it all the way down to the bottom. I don't want any volume. Can you customize it too, or is it only the drag feature? Um, it's usually drag feature. Um, the only thing that I see with customizing, like if you wanted the same effect on each of your transitions, for example, there is an option for you to do that there, where you could just keep repeating the same, uh, same kind of build. But for, for your audio, it's, it's per clip. So, okay. yeah. so it's, it's, quite, it's personalized in, in that sense. So I've got Nora's clip, but I do want to add a transition. I don't really want things to be too boxy. So I think I'm going to choose. Hmm. Why don't you guys help me out? What do you want to see? I can't read the titles. Are they, are they really small? They're really small. Come across Zoom. For those of you with, with crazy, crazy eyes. Here we go. I'll put cross Zoom in there. So cross zoom, I'll just pull the playhead back a little bit and hit the space bar to preview it. And so it'll cross zoom into her film. Now, the film is pretty short, so cross zoom actually doesn't look like it works very well. So what I might want to do is take it away and use a different transition, but for time's sake, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Now your film, just like your images, you can add titles to it, you can change things. Sorry, it wants to start again, so I'll just hit spacebar to stop it. Um, 
working with the film highlighted here. I can go into this frame here, and this is where I can edit it. I can change things about the film, such as the effect. So that's by clicking the actual film strip here. And when I click on video effect, a whole bunch of menus show up. So you can kind of see how multi-layered um, iMovie can be. Like, we're, we're taking for granted how much we see and just think that that's how film is. Um, just like we think directors of films are the ones who are in charge of making things look really, really pretty, that's actually the DOP on a movie set. That's the director of photography. Director of photography is who is responsible for sitting and deciding what's going to look really, really pretty or the element of a shot. Uh, director just simply says, this is what I need you to shoot. So that's kind of a neat little side note. So the video effect here, you've got flip, you've got like film green, you've got a whole bunch. And all you need to do is run your cursor over it to get an idea of what, what kind of um, effect you might want to choose. Again, bear with me. I've just got a little bit of a slow run with my computer tonight. So, But you get the idea that you can change your video effect. And this is kind of neat when you want to change things like black and white, for example, is kind of neat because then it gives you that old world, old film look. So, And obviously, depending on how dark. Now, this film was taken, you know, bright day. So black and white might not work or look as well. But I'm not going to add any video effects to that today. So I'm just going to click Cancel. Another thing that you can do, so let's say there's something or some element to the film that you're not happy about, you can actually crop the film. So I could change the size of the film. I don't need a Ken Burns effect, but I can definitely crop the, uh, the film itself. Like maybe I didn't want, I don't know, Travis's pants to be in that that clip because that's my partner. So I might take his pants out and I can do that by cropping. Um, but I'm simply just going to come out of this for now. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, spinning wheel of death again. So I haven't talked about maps and um, you've got other transitions that are hidden in this. Just looks like it's waiting its turn to catch up. Sorry. But back in your content library, this is where you can also add, um, let's say you're doing like a travel video, you want to give like a small biography of like what happened um, on your travels, you know, give a slideshow. You can also add maps um, and also um, different elements. So if you are actually, you're working a little ahead, you could technically create your own trailers with those uh, prompts that you saw the other day. Um, I don't know why this is taking so long, so my apologies, guys. The computer just doesn't look very happy. <laughs> um, uh, I do want to yeah. say while we're waiting for it, like I worked with iMovie 2011, that's what I learned in, and the, yeah, features, yeah. the features that are available in 2013 look so much, uh, like there's so many more options, but I think yes. it kind of scared me away, like not, I just didn't take the time to like get to know 2013 because the layout and the interface look um, a little bit different. So it's really cool to go over this and see what the possibilities are and kind of some of the new things that they've added and some of the new title wow. frames I noticed transitions look a little bit more, you know, there's a few more professional ones in my opinion, like then some, I remember some of the old iMovie ones were very like cartoony and kitschy and just, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think this kind of gives it uh, more of an element of professionalism um, to the to iMovie and for, for movie makers. Um, there's even elements of Final Cut Pro including some of the transitions and some of the aspects of editing the film. Sorry, I have no idea why my computer is being this awesome, but it is what it is. It's technology. Um, okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's definitely, there, there are elements of Final Cut that even got put into this, and I totally agree when, when I when, <laughs> When I first updated my computer to Mavericks, um, I freaked out that I had lost iMovie 2011. I was really choked because that was kind of my go-to, my comfort zone, you know, my favorite snack, and then it was gone. So um, this kind of forced me to kind of get back into it and see sort of what the new aspects were. And I managed to create a few things on here that I was pretty, uh, pretty stoked about. So it's looking like my computer's still really frozen. So. I don't know if I want to risk closing this for now, but what I can tell you, because I still do have a cursor that's free, even though my spinning wheel of death is going, um, the last thing I would have shown you tonight is the uh, iTunes menu, which is down here. 
I can attempt to try and close this and maybe pop it back up. That's the one thing that I wouldn't mind trying because um, iTunes, essentially, same thing. You're going to get iTunes. It will pop up, and your whole entire iTunes library will show up. It's similar in the same area as your transitions um, menu. The effects is great, too. How many of sound in your classroom? Because the kids are going to want to play around with this. This is a lot of the iLife sound effects. Um, so everything from a class bell ringing to rain to small theme music that is um, can be used for the media that we saw way back when we first started under the themes. So like news newscasts. There's even a newscast theme. The newscast, which is pretty cool. Um, and then your last menu at the bottom here is GarageBand, and something that would be so obviously if you're brand new, you get that overzealous. But hey, man, I'm never gonna. However, going to be um, where you can actually create the music that can be then used and exported into. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you guys can still hear me, even though I still have a spinning wheel of death. Yeah, it's been cutting yeah. out a little teeny weeny bit. Not like we can still hear everything you say. It's just been kind of slow sometimes. Um, it's cool if you can't show those parts, but um, assuming that it's a very, very similar process in dragging and dropping media from iTunes, GarageBand, any of the audio options uh, right into your video um, building window there. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then again, you also have the same editing properties for iTunes, so you could drag and drop um, an entire song, or you can choose a certain section of the song that you want played, um, and then cut that. Those are, those are just the main elements that I wasn't able to get to tonight that take a little bit more time than what I have. Um, it's usually under the edit menu, which is up at the top here. Um, so definitely worth exploring, definitely worth uh, trying out, especially for year end. It's only mid-May, um, so you definitely have time to play with this and create something um, and get your students on board too so that you guys can make a really cool little year end souvenir. Um, easily exportable to a USB drive or export to Edmodo or send it to um, iDVD and burn um, DVDs for your kids. That's another great option. Um, I did this um, I did it this way for our grade 7 farewell uh, video that we make uh, every year with a, with a class that I had. That was super fun and uh, it was a riot to make because the kids again hammed it up for me and we definitely had kind of an idea of what was going on. However, you know, creating a new project usually you don't have a template or storyboard but definitely you don't, uh, you don't have any limits on that. You can, you can definitely create storyboards for whatever you're going to add to your movie. So. Yeah, that's what I would definitely recommend. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Kat, for joining us. It was really awesome to have you and have a have an iMovie guru film, experienced film kind of teacher. So that's really awesome. So thanks. Yeah, yeah sorry. Thanks for that expertise. Things, yeah. things still freeze, guys. So it doesn't matter how awesome you are at working with these things, sometimes they just still freeze. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you are running a Google Hangout while you're trying to show something that does take up a lot of memory on your computer. So... Uh, keeping that in mind uh, for the people who are watching and watching later. Um, so just to let everybody know, we're going to wrap up here. Um, we have two special interviews coming up for EdTech Mentorship Network. Uh, one on the 21st with Aaron Mueller. He's out on the island and he is a learning commons and library specialist. So we're going to be doing a little 30-minute interview, uh, a few sessions with a few educators from BC, just kind of highlighting some of the cool stuff they're doing and trying to connect the mentors to uh, other folks in the province. So Aaron Mueller will be on uh, the 21st of May. And the time on that, oh goodness, let me check my calendar, is 8 p.m. 8 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the week after that, following immediately on the May 28th, is Dave Shortread. He's out in Victoria. So we have two Islanders, actually, for our first two interviews. And uh, we'll be talking to Dave at 3 p.m. Uh, so for those of you who get out earlier, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific time with Dave. And he is uh, the tech integration specialist for the entire district, Victoria School District. So uh, really looking forward to those two and highlighting some of the leader, lead mentors in the province so that they can um, connect with some other folks and you can kind of see what their strengths are. So yeah. 
Any last words, Jer? Cat? No, I'm looking forward to those interviews. And tonight, another insightful, um, if somewhat delayed, uh, video session. So, yeah, good night. Awesome. Thank you very much.